live from Fenway Park in Boston, the New England Sports Network presents exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball. Tonight, it's the Red Sox against the Oakland A's. Greetings, everyone. I'm Bob Kurtz. Welcome to the ballpark. This homestand has been going very well so far for the Red Sox. They won two of three over the weekend from the Seattle Mariners. And now the Oakland A's come to town to start a big four-game series here at Fenway. The same Oakland A's that are one game behind the Red Sox, the American League wildcard standings. The A's have been the hottest club in baseball since the All-Star break. They have a record of 21-9, and they are fresh from a three-game weekend sweep of the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm joined now, as always, by Jerry Remy. The A's actually have had good success against the Red Sox this year, although the Sox have haven't seen him in a while. Well, it's been a long time, Bob, since back at the beginning of the season. Of course, at that time, you watched the A's play and didn't expect them to be even contention for a wild card, but they have really had a terrific season. We look at some of the numbers for the Oakland Athletics this year, and first of all, a team batting average, which was last in the league, but don't be fooled. They walk a lot, 564 walks on a season, which means they get a lot of good hitters counts, and that's resulted in a lot of home runs. They had second in the league to Seattle in the home runs, and to me, the biggest surprise has been the team ERA of 4.53, which is third best in the league behind the Yankees. Yankees and the Red Sox. Now we'll look at some of the key contributors on this ball club. John Jaha, who's probably going to be a comeback of the year player. 27 home runs on the season. Matt Stairs with a career high 29 and Giambi with 25. And they've done a great job with their trades. Since the trading deadline, they picked up Apia, Oliveris, Velarde, and they've all really contributed to this ball club. I think the only down thing is they lost Tony Phillips yesterday with a broken leg. He's going to be out for the season. They're going to miss him. Yeah, so far in the season series against the Red Sox have the lead three games to one. Brian Rose goes for the Sox tonight. Omar Oliveris will pitch for the Oakland A's back with the starting lineups right after this. Nesson's exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly Southwest Airlines. By Dunkin' Donuts. Nothing says morning like Dunkin' Donuts. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are, Hey, beer man! By Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. And by Mobile, introducing the fastest way to get gas, Mobile Speed Pass. It's free and it's only at Mobile. A terrific day here in Boston, perfect weather. And a great night for baseball here at Fenway Park. The Red Sox welcome the Oakland A's to town, the first of a four-game series. Both clubs in the chase for the Wild Club. Both clubs also obviously doing very well within their own division. The Red Sox uh, beginning the day, six and a half games behind the Yankees. In the East, and Oakland is four and a half games behind Texas in the West. Here's the A's starting lineup tonight. Ryan Christensen will lead it off. He'll be in center field. Randy Velarde, their new second baseman, follows. And Jason Giambi bats third. John Jaha hits cleanup. Matt Stairs bats number five. He plays right field. It's Ben Grieve in left. Miguel Tejada at shortstop. Eric Chavez is the third baseman. And A.J. Hinch, the catcher, will bat ninth. And the defense tonight for the Red Sox, John Valentin will be at third base. Nomar Garcia Parra, the shortstop. Jose Offerman at second. And Brian Daubach, who was named Player of the Week this week in the American League, will be at first base. Troy O'Leary in left. Donnie Sadler again in center. Trot Nixon in right. Jason Veritek behind the plate. And on the mound, right-hander Brian Rose. Start number 17, a record of 6-4. and four, The 4.52 ERA. Rose looking for his first win since back on July 20th. That came against the Florida Marlins. He struggled in his last two outings, only lasting three and two-thirds against the Angels. And last time out, three and a third against the Royals. But the Red Sox did win that game 9-6. to six. Our men in blue tonight, Jim Evans calls the balls and strikes behind the plate. Mike DeMuro works at first base. Bill Miller is the second base umpire, and Chuck Merriweather is over third. Art Howe has done a terrific job with these Oakland A's. It was a year ago at this time that the players basically were pleading with management to have Art Howe stay on as manager. And Steer is leading that to support for Art Howe, especially during the offseason. And he's done a terrific job, has his club in second, as I mentioned, in the American League West. They're four and a half games behind the Rangers, putting some heat on Texas, putting some heat on the Red Sox. They're just a game behind Boston in the wild card chase. Red Sox, six and a half games behind the Yankees, a game and a half up on the third place Toronto Blue Jays. As you look at the American League Eastern Division standings, the Yankees continue to play very good ball, despite losing two or three over the weekend to Minnesota. Terrific weather here in Boston, shirt sleeve weather for Jimmy Williams. For Oakland, number 28, the center fielder. Looking forward to this four-game series here Christian against the A's. Ryan Rose all set to match up here against Ryan Christensen, Randy Velarde, and Jason Giambi to follow for Oakland here in the first inning. 
Christensen who's had a tough time at the plate and misses sophomore season hitting 212 four homers and 17 runs batted in the low batting average the A's have Christensen in there this will be the 10th time this year that he has been the leadoff hitter in a ball game most recently he has just six hits in his last 38 trips is a terrific fielding center fielder Ryan Rose looking for his seventh win of the season tonight for the Red Sox misses with the fastball inside and falls behind 3-0. Well, we talked about in the open, Bob, they walk a lot, uh, most in the American League, and they hit uh, a lot of home runs. Get themselves in decent hit as counts. They don't have a high team batting average. As a matter of fact, 255 is last in both leagues. Last in average, but they're sixth in runs. Rose comes back with two straight strikes. It's a full count. Christensen will foul this one down the left field line. Still three balls, two strikes. These have been the best team in the American League since the All-Star break. They have gone 21 and 9. They're 11 and 3 this month. They have a terrific home record, but one on the road this weekend, sweeping the Blue Jays up at Sky Dome, including a 9-5 win yesterday. Ground ball to third. John Ballantin will handle it to Brian Dorbach, and there's one out. That's amazing, Bob. When you look at the Oakland numbers, they have played very well against the American League East. They are 22 and 9 against the East. So that's the only division they're over 500. And they also did well against National League teams, 12 and 6. But they have really cleaned up against the East. And you mentioned coming off the sweep of the Toronto Blue Jays. And conversely, the Blue Jays have not been able to beat the Yankees. They've not been able to beat the Red Sox, and they have not been able to beat the A's. As you look at Randy Velarde coming over in that trade with the Anaheim Angels. 309 on the year, 10 homers, 49 runs batted in. Marty acquired on July 29th. Oliveris also coming over tonight. Oliveris will be starting the ball game tonight on the mound. Hot shot to first base. Brian Dorbach's been doing it with the bat and now the glove as he puts it over to Brian Rose covering two outs. Now we mentioned uh, just a few moments ago that Daubach, uh, all excited today, was named the American League Player of the Week uh, for the outstanding week he had offensively. Here he makes a nice defensive play. That inside-out stroke by Randy Velotti looked like it was going to be a base hit, but Daubach going into the dive and a nice feed to Brian Rose, who's covering first base. American League Player of the Week, Brian Daubach, an honor well-earned. Little leather on that play. Here's Jason Giambi. Giambi takes a breaking ball from Rose for a called strike. Giambi's at 320 on the year. Very consistent ball player. 25 home runs, 90 runs batted in. Had a career high three doubles yesterday against the Blue Jays to help lead the A's to win. Saw his younger brother Jeremy when the Red Sox made that three game uh, swing through Kansas City. It's interesting. We talked about the Athletics walking more than any team in the American League. Red Sox pitching has walked fewer than any team in the American League. Joe Kerrigan studying his charts over in the Red Sox dugout. Down of a ball and two strikes on Jason Giambi. Probably the leader of the Oakland A's, and Giambi goes down swinging. It's a good first inning for Brian Rose. One, two, three. Go the Oaklands. The A's are scoreless. The Red Sox are coming up. Back here at Fenway Park, the A's scored us. The Red Sox coming to bat here. Game one of this four-game series. Red Sox will come at the A's this way. Jose Offerman will lead it off at second base. John Valentin follows at third. Ryan Daubach will bat third. He plays first base. 
Omar Garcia Parra hits cleanup. It is Troy O'Leary in left field. Reggie Jefferson is the designated hitter. Jason Baratek catching. Donnie Sadler back in center field. And Trot Nixon's in right. Athletics at ninth in the league in defense. They've made 87 errors on the season. Eric Chavez will be at third base. Miguel Tejada the shortstop. Randy Velarde at second. And Jason Giambi at first. Left to right, Ben Grieve, Ryan Christensen, and Matt Stairs. A.J. Hinch behind the plate. And on the mound, Omar Oliveris. One of the players, along with Randy Velarde, that came over from the Angels, uh, for three minor league players. At the time of the trade, he was leading the Angels in wins, innings pitch. And uh, this guy has done a heck of a job since coming over to Oakland. He's made three starts and has two wins, 2-0 two with a 2.95 since joining his new ball club. Now he and Apier are combined 5-0 since the trading deadline. Here's Jose Offerman. Leading off with the Red Sox. First pitch strike from Oliveris. Beat the Yankees his last time out. It'll be Jose Offerman and John Valentin and then Brian Daubach for the Red Sox here in the home half of the first. Sinker slide a split finger fastball. By Oliveris generally gets a lot of ground ball outs. This one a base hit for Jose Offerman. On an 0-2 pitch, Offerman has the game's first hit. Offerman's always had a lot of success, uh, success against Oliveras, a 417 batting average batting coming in tonight's action, Number and uh, way too good a pitch there on the 0-2 count. Baseman, and Offerman John makes him pay with Bellin the base hit. Lead off man aboard for the Red Sox. John Valentin at the plate. John hitting 262, 11 homers and 66 runs batted in. Valentin 0 for 4 yesterday, and the Red Sox lost to the Mariners here at Fenway. Now, because of the type of pitcher Olivera says, he gives up a lot of hits. And it costs a lot of ground balls, and that results in a lot of double plays. He has the second most double plays in the league. Only Scott Erickson has more. Trying to induce a double play ball here from Valentin. 1-0 count. Attention paid to Offerman over at first, held over there by Jason Giambi. Erickson has uh, induced 26 ground balls that have been turned into twin killings. Oliver is 24, and Jeff Supon, who we saw the other day in Kansas City, 23. It's interesting that the graphic on the double plays, because uh, obviously the first two pitches on there, Erickson and Oliveris, ground ball pitches, but you think of Supon as more of a fly ball type pitcher. But maybe that changeup that he featured against the Red Sox has been getting him a lot of ground ball outs. Certainly has had a successful year there. One of the American League leaders in ERA. After a very tough year last year with Arizona. There's the double play ball. 1-4-3. Oliveras to Velarde to Giambi. See, when you play against a guy like Oliveras, if you get in those counts where you can play some hit and run, uh, send some runners, you've got to do it just to stay out of the double play. Taylor made here one big high hop to Oliveras. He almost handcuffed Velarde, but he's able to make the catch and the throw for the double play. American League Player of the Week, Brian Daubach. Eye-popping numbers, 341 batting average, 19 home runs, 65 runs batted in. Daubach had another double yesterday against Seattle. Mark Portugal, who worked in the ball game against the Mariners yesterday, picking up that ball. You know when you're going good, when you get knocked down by the other team, and that happened yesterday. After wearing out Seattle all weekend, they finally dropped him on an 0-2 pitch, and it's kind of a sign of respect. And this one fouled you buy your lottery ticket today with the number 23 in it. <laughs> Can't afford it, lottery ticket. <laughs> if we can scrape together some pennies for you, we, we ought to purchase one. See how we do. We play like Powerball, you know, and get the uh, the power the power number would be 23, and we'll build around that. Next swing, foul back by Doorbox. Still two strikes. Veras pitched for a number of major league clubs St. Louis Colorado Philadelphia Detroit Seattle 
Anaheim and now Oakland. Robach sends this one to left field. Grieve is back at the wall, reaches up and makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. Reeve played it perfectly, went right back to the warning track, felt for the wall, went up on the wall, and pulled down the line drive off the bat of Dorbach. So we've played one here at Fenway Park tonight. The Red Sox and Oakland are scoreless. Back at Fenway, no score after one inning. Let's take a look at the batting leaders in the American League and National League, brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Omar Garcia Parra on top at 361, a little bigger lead than a day ago. Derek Jeter, 354. Bernie Williams, 352. Omar Vizquel and Tony Fernandez. In the National League, Larry Walker with a good-sized lead over Sean Casey. Bobby Abreu having a fine season. Louis Gonzalez and Henry Rodriguez. They've been in that top five for quite some time now. Faces in the crowd. You know that guy on the left? That's Sean McDonough with his friend Ashley. How come Sean's here on days that uh, he's not scheduled to work and then he's doing some big gig on days he's supposed to work? Golf over the weekend. I don't know. Fresh right. off the PGA Tour, right? Yep. Back in Boston the first day and he's at the ballpark. That's dedication. John Jaha, 285 on the year, 27 homers, 76 runs batted in and what has been a terrific comeback year for Jaha. Quickly down two strikes to Brian Rose. Jaha last year had all kinds of injuries, limited to just 73 games. He injured his left foot and his right hamstring last year on the same play. And the situation worsened as the season went on. No balls, two strikes for 95 through last year with the Brewers. He missed 206 games with injuries. Red Sox took a look at Jaha during the offseason, couldn't pass the physical. Went out to Oakland, eventually was able to pass the physical out there after a while and has had a terrific year the ball hard here knocked down by Garcia Pirate short recovers the throw and it's in time to get Jaha at first base now the combination of uh, how hard the ball was hit and the fact that Jaha does not run all that well gave Nomar plenty of time to throw him out at first base. This ball is really hit hard by Jaha with some top spin. Nomar knocks it down and fortunately that ball rolling in his direction and he had time with that sidearm throw to throw Jaha out. Jaha the uh, all-star representative for the Oakland Athletics this year. Nomar was at that ball game as well. Really? Yeah, I think he was. Here's Matt Stairs. 260 on the year. Career high 29 home runs. 82 runs batted in. Stairs banged around baseball for a while looking for a place to play. Played with the Red Sox on their Eastern Division Championship team in 1995. They went out to Oakland. And has done very well as a member of the A's going to Oakland as a free agent. Looking for a place to play. He's found one on the West Coast. He has hit three game ending home runs this year. Last of which was last week at home against the Yankees. Round ball here towards second base. Jose Offerman will make the play over to Brian Dorbach. Two outs. So Rose has been sharp here in the early going. Brian trying to uh, turn things around. His last three starts, he has not made it uh, past the fourth inning. Well, and the good thing is, too, all the outs, with the exception of the strikeout, have been ground ball outs, and that's certainly what you want to do against a powerful team like Oakland. Last year is American League Rookie of the Year, Ben Grieve, 260 this year. 20 homers, 63 runs batted in. If you have a very good memory, Go back to us, uh, with us, back to early May when the Red Sox last faced the A's. Reeve was struggling at the plate then, has picked it up a bit since then. Going out here, though, by Offerman, and it's a 1 2 3, top half of the second inning. We're scoreless after one and a half. September 2nd is the game you've been waiting for when the Red Sox and Fenway Franks bring you Wally the Beanbag Buddy All-Star Day. All fans 15 and under receive a commemorative Wally Beanbag Buddy compliments of Fenway Franks. For tickets, call 617-482-4SOX for 24-hour touchstone ticketing. Omar Garcia-Para leads off for the Red Sox here. 
Top half of the bottom half of the second inning. Garcia Parra, O'Leary, and then Reggie Jefferson. Omar goes after the first pitch, pops it foul. McDonough's got it. No, he doesn't, but Giambi does. <laughs> Cast of Monday's Red Sox game here on Nesson. We now rejoin the action later in the game. To complete, no score here at Fenway. Well, with the NFL season right around the corner, Charlie Moore is getting into the spirit of things tomorrow night by going fishing with Patriot offensive lineman Heath Irwin. In addition, you'll also hear about a program in Newport, Rhode Island, designed specifically for handicapped sailors. We'll also head to Western Massachusetts to get a look at the Berkshire Rodeo team. It's all tomorrow night in the front row, and you should be, too, starting at 6.30 right here on Nesson. With the ball game to follow at 7 o'clock, Red Sox, today is game two of the four-game series. How Brian, How do they squeeze that into a half hour? I don't Turning know. Seven for That's Oakland. a lot of stuff tomorrow in the front row. Number four. We usually is every night. Stop, Miguel Tejada. Great show to watch. 6.30 tomorrow night, right before the ball game. Here comes Miguel Tejada to lead off for the A's in the top of the third. Bottom third of the order, Tejada, Chavez, and then uh, A.J. Hinch. 48 for Tejada, 14 homers and 60 runs batted in. Ryan Rose began the year for the Red Sox with three straight wins, two of them over the Yankees and the other over the Indians, his first three starts of the year. Since then, he's gone three and four and has had six no decisions. New ball game tonight, six up, six down thus far as he misses to Tejada, falls behind 2-0. and oh. Mentioned the 14 home runs by for Tejada. That's the most by an Oakland shortstop since Campy Campaneras had 22 back in 1970. Puts him into pretty good company. Tejada's been a slick fielder, has added a little pop at the plate for the A's. Sitting here in a 3-0 count. And there's the strike, says plate umpire Jim Evans. Three and one. Look at how many home runs the A's have hit as a team. They're second to Seattle with their 173. The A's have homered in 16 straight games and in 34 of their last 35. Home run is a major weapon in their arsenal. Mahana here, working Rose for a leadoff walk in the third. Batting eight. Number three, the third baseman, Eric Chavez. Here's Eric Chavez, 260. 13 homers, 44 runs batted in. Left-handed hitting third baseman. Comes to Fenway with a six-game hitting streak. We've got a couple of guys that have really been hot since the All-Star break, and Chavez is one of those, along with uh, Jason Giambi. Well, you'd figure they'd have good numbers. What are they, 21 and 9 since the yeah. All-Star game here? Yep. Second best record, the only team better than Mets, right? Yeah, Mets are better in the National League. The A's are the best in the American League. Two hottest clubs in baseball. Chavez takes a called strike. It's quickly nothing in two. A's have done a terrific job with their drafting. Chavez was their first round selection in 96. Reeve, the rookie of the year last year out in left field tonight, their first round selection in 94. Jason Giambi drafted in the second round in 92. A.J. Hinch behind the plate is homegrown. And there's a pitcher we're going to see here on Thursday night matched up against Pedro Martinez, Tim Hudson. Also a high draft choice. Hudson's done very well so far, winning seven of his first eight decisions. The A's have done it with some very good drafting. Billy Bean, their general manager, made some nice trades. They've had a terrific roster turnover. And they had five new players at the trading deadline. Hot is at first base with a leadoff walk. 
Two strikes on the hitter, Eric Chavez. A.J. Hinch is on deck for Oakland. Rod Nixon won't be able to get there in time. Rounding second, heading for third is Tejada. Long way to go for Nixon on the fly ball off the bat of Chavez, and the A's now have a threat going first and third with nobody out. Well, it's an 0-2 count, but really not that bad of a pitch by uh, Brian Rose. It's up and in. Chavez able to make contact. Actually, the ball did tail back onto the inside part of the plate, but uh, not a disastrous pitch on an 0-2 count. Just a good piece of hitting by Chavez. A little first and third here by the Athletics with nobody out. First threat of the ball game by either side. A.J. Hinch, the young catcher, 215 with five homers and 20 runs batted in. Now back, Hinch was one for four yesterday in the win over Toronto, has a modest four-game hitting streak. His big contribution over the weekend came a Saturday, he hit a grand slam home run off Joey Hamilton, part of an A's eight run first inning. Lute pitching is hurting a little now. David Wells still has that stiff back. Mayer may not be able to go in his next start. Joey Hamilton lasted only a third of an inning in that ball game against the A's, and he's questionable for his next start as well. Bunt by Hinch right down the third baseline. Bunted too hard and foul. Well, Tejada will have to return to third base. Not a suicide squeeze put on, but a safety squeeze. There was uh, no action at third base until it looked like the ball was going to be a good bunt. And that's what a uh, safety squeeze is. Watch the runner at third base. He's not taking off on the pitch. But when he sees the bunt and feels like he can make it, he takes off and goes home with the bunt going foul. The worst that's going to happen if you get it in fair territory is a sacrifice. And you're going to get a couple of men in the scoring position. Lynch now down two strikes. And Tejada's at third. Eric Chavez is over at first. He's threatening here in the top of the third. job of protecting the plate by Hinch fouls it back but a big crowd on hand here at Fenway Park as the A's come to town to start this series good job staying alive by A.J. Hinch a, a good pitch by Rose on the 0-2 count the breaking ball down and away yeah we were told there were a lot of tickets left for this series about 5,000 for a game but uh, almost full tonight One game separating these two teams in the wild card race. Four games coming up here at Fenway. Three to follow this as Rose misses inside. Two and two the count. Two and two or one and two. One scoreboard has two two. One scoreboard has one and two. Let's go with one and two. I think it's one and two because I believe he fouled off that breaking ball yeah, on the 0-2 right. count. Now everything is in sync. All the scoreboards match. One ball, two strikes. Drives this one deep to left field. This one is hit well, and it's gone. A home run for A.J. Hinch. A walk, a single, and now a home run by Hinch, and the A's quickly have a 3-0 lead. Home run number six for Hinch. The A's have now homered in 17 straight games. More importantly, they have a 3 0 lead in this one. Now, when you think of all the home run power on this ball club, you certainly don't think of A.J. Hintz uh, right off the bat, but uh, he's got the first one of the series. Fastball down and in. And uh, no question about that when it left the bat. Top of the order, and here's Ryan Christensen. Said the A's walk a lot. Said Tejada drew a leadoff walk here in the third. And hit a lot of home runs. Hinch has just hit a three-run bomb. 
Fouled back by Christensen. Two balls and a strike. Rose got Christensen and a ground ball to John Ballantin at third to open the game. Up high for ball three. Christensen opening the year with the A's, then was uh, sent down to Vancouver on April the 13th and recalled on May 22nd. That's a strike and a full count. And you see Christensen trying to do his job as a leadoff hitter by taking a lot of pitches, running that count to three and two. Sends this one down the left field line. Long run for Troy O'Leary. Won't get there in time, but it's foul ball and in the seats. Still three balls, two strikes. You mentioned, Bob, in the open that the, the Athletics losing Tony Phillips. Uh, with a broken leg in that ball game yesterday he was sliding in the second base up in Toronto trying to break up a double play suffered the broken leg and he is apparently out for the season and that's a, that's a tough break because we all know Tony Phillips a real feisty tough gamer for, uh, for any ball club and he will be missed I mean a pretty good year here in Oakland big clubhouse leader fiery ball player Almeida Sains has been activated in uh, Phillips place Phillips of course on the disabled list and out for the remainder of the season. There's a walk to Christensen second walk issued by Rose this inning. This is yesterday in Toronto. This is Tony Phillips at first base. He'll go into second base try and break up this double play. And this is where Phillips suffers the injury. Awkward slide there at second Phillips with a broken leg on the play and is now out for the season. And of course Phillips about 40 41 years of age. You wonder whether that may be a career ending injury. Only a big one for the Oakland A's affecting their offense. Joe Kerrigan out to talk with Brian Rose. There is action. Mark Guthrie loosening up in the bullpen uh, for the Red Sox. Number eight. Second Concerned base. about Rose. He was three and a third his last start. Three and two thirds the start before that, and four innings the start before that. He's had three straight short outings. Breeze through the first six hitters here tonight, setting the A's down in order in each of the first two innings. A walk, a single, a home run, and a walk. All four A's have reached here in the third, as this one is fouled back by Randy Velarde. One strike to count. Velarde with an 11 game hitting streak. The 431 during the streak. That followed a 1 for 19 performance in his first five games as a member of the A's, coming over. From the Angels, but he's picked it up and drives this one. He has a 12 game hitting streak. Donnie Sadler with a play in center field falls down, but recovers in a hurry and holding at second base is Ryan Christensen. Now, that's one thing Velarde does very well. He'll move that ball to the opposite field. An excellent number two hitter in the lineup. Hard line drive up over the head of Jose Offerman. He number extends 16, his hitting streak. The first baseman. And he is uh, having a big inning here against Brian Rose. A little hesitation by Christensen. Uh, make sure that ball was not caught by Offerman. And even with the slip, he's not able to advance the, the third base. Donnie looked like he was on skates out there in the outfield. Popped up in a hurry, though. Two on, nobody out. Skates that haven't been sharpened in a while. Lost an edge, Jerry. <laughs> They're not skating, mate. <laughs> we got a back check. Good numbers for Jason Giambi. He's been pounding the baseball. He usually does. That's a strike. Nothing in two. Giambi a strikeout victim back in the first inning. Second time tonight, swinging in the first inning and called here for the first out in the third. So many times with two strikes, hitters try to protect Number the whole five, plate and the pitches hitter. a lot of times will come inside John in that situation. Jaha. He'll just freeze Giambi with that fastball on the inside corner. 
He's not thinking out over the plate to protect it with uh, down a couple of strikes. And you become vulnerable inside. Rather now the cleanup hitter, the designated hitter, John Jaha. Rose working him away. One ball, no strikes. Jaha grounded out to Garcia Parrish short back in the second inning. Now hitless in his last 11 at bats. Base runners, Christensen at second, Velarde at first with one out, three in on the home run by Hinch. The A's with a 3 0 lead here in the top of the third. Jaha drives one to center field. This will fall safely. Rounding third is Christensen. Heading to the plate. Donnie Sadler's throw will sail over the cutoff man. All the way to the plate and played there by Jason Veritek with no advancement by the base runners. Ryan Christensen coming in to score. Velarde stops at second base. Jaha at first base with an RBI single. And the Red Sox are behind in this one now 4 nothing. And that's going to be it uh, for Brian Rose. Another short outing for Rose. That's his third in the row. And it's really a concern for the Red Sox in that starting rotation. Rose retired the first six hitters tonight, but uh, running into difficulty here in the fourth, and he'll be gone in two and a third innings. Fifty pitches for Brian Rose tonight, 28 of them coming here in the third inning. Set the side down in order in each of the first two, and then the walk, the single, the home run by Hinch, another walk, single by Velarde, RBI single by John Jaha has knocked Brian Rose from the game. Now Atlantic Mobile call to the bullpen has gone out, answered by the left-hander Mark Guthrie. We'll take a break. Back with more baseball from Fenway Park right after this. The A's have turned on the power here in the top of the third. We're visiting with Sean McDonough up here in the broadcast booth. Gary and Sean chatting. Mark Guthrie taking over here on the mound for the Red Sox. Guthrie making his 43rd appearance out of the bullpen this year. One and one record, a couple of saves, and a earned run average over six, 6.53. It's two innings pitched, 18 walks, and 30 strikeouts for the left-hander Guthrie. A concern, of course, with another short outing by Brian Rose. Rose going two and a third in the ball game here tonight. Well, Guthrie will get his tune-up tosses in. Bob Rogers tracking other ball games for us tonight. We've already heard from Texas and Cleveland. Other games around the American League tonight. Tampa Bay at Detroit. Seattle plays at Toronto. The Yankees and Twins are rematched in the Bronx and Anaheim and the White Sox. Bob will be keeping you up to date with highlights on some of those ball games. And we'll have scores for you every 20 minutes tonight here on Nesson. So here's Matt Stairs since joining Oakland after leaving Boston in 95. Stairs has clubbed 92 home runs, including a career high 29 this year. Comes up here against Guthrie with Velarde at second base and John Jaha aboard at first. Makes a called strike. How the left hand is in this lineup, Bob, and uh, you would figure the left handed relief pitchers be very busy in this series. A lot of their lefties are also the guys with the power. Giambi, Stairs, uh, Grieve. There's Chavez down in that uh, eighth spot. Guthrie first up out of the bullpen for the Red Sox tonight. Starter going early. Figures the bullpen will be used heavily in the ball game tonight. There's takes a called strike. Two balls and a strike to count. Stairs grounding out to Offerman at second base. Back in the second inning. Round ball here played by Daubach at first base. Daubach will step on the bag. That gets Stairs. The runners advance. Velarde goes to third. And Jaha scampers down to second. You're talking about Ben Grieve uh, early in the season, really, really having a tough time. And of course, Grieve, Number at one 14. point, there was some talk that maybe he'd be going to the minor leagues. Well, that ben certainly didn't happen, Grieve. and uh, Grieve has really turned it on since that time. Getting over 300 since, uh, what, toward the end of May. And we were there right at the end of uh, April, early part of May. He was really struggling. 
didn't figure to hit uh, his numbers of a year ago but uh, done a decent job 20 home runs already two more home runs than he had last year when he was the rookie of the year in the American League. Since May 19th he's headed a 323 clip. Last year in his rookie year a right fielder this year moved to left field. And in a key spot here the A's have already scored four runs in the inning they have a pair in scoring position. Guthrie trying to slam the door as the A's have batted around here and pops him up. I see a pirate called off by Troy O'Leary. O'Leary will handle things and that retires the side. So a nice job by Guthrie comes out against two very tough hitters. Matt Stairs and Ben Grieve to end the inning. A big three-run homer by A.J. Hinch. It's the Oakland A's started. They've got themselves a 4-0 lead after two and a half. Watching Sox in two. The rebroadcast of Monday's Red Sox game here on Nesson. We now rejoin the action later in the game. Now back here at Fenway Park, bottom half of the fourth inning, a 4-0 lead for the Oakland A's over the Red Sox. Time now to answer our AFLAC trivia question. We will open the envelope and find out who was the last Red Sox right-handed hitter to win the American League batting title. We gave you a big hint. It was Carney Lansford. Won it in 1981 here with a 336 average and later played with the Oakland A's. And now as a manager in a minor league system, I believe a triple-A manager, but I can't remember the team that Carney's working for. Because 1981, that was the strike shortened season. That's for the American League batting champ with a 336 mark. John Ballantin leads off for the Red Sox. Chops one to short. Miguel Tejada over to Jason Giambi at first base. There's one out. We head back to our Nesson Studios now and Bob Rogers. Bob? All right, Bob. The Cleveland Indians reacquiring Carlos Baerga from the San Diego Padres. Mike Hargrove puts him right into the lineup, and immediately he has an impact. Commits an error, which allows a run to score. Texas had a 2-0 lead. Robbie Alomar had a base hit to make it 2-1. That's the score in the third. Mayerga, former second place, been playing third in Cleveland. Travis Fryman has been on the disabled list since uh, July the 4th. Had a target date today for returning to the lineup, and that's the second week in September. But right now, they need help at third base, and they get Bayerga, who they looked at earlier and couldn't get together with on a contract. Actually, Bayerga started out as a third baseman in the big leagues with San Diego, then going to Cleveland, and he was moved to second base. So he's got some experience there. Ryan Daubach at the plate for the Red Sox. One ball, one strike on Daubach, who flied out to Grieve in left field. Put Grieve right up against that left field wall. Back in the first inning. Two and one the count. Red Sox have two hits so far tonight. A leadoff single in the first inning, Jose Offerman. He was erased in a double play. Two out single by Reggie Jefferson in the second. Oliveras has retired the last five hitters. Lamar Oliveras is 110. He's lost nine this year. He was eight and nine as a member of the Anaheim Angels prior to the trade. As Dorbach now three balls, two strikes. Still three and two on Dawbach batting here with the bases empty one out bottom of the fourth inning. Once again the three two pitch misses inside for ball four that's the first three ticket issued by Oliveris tonight. And Sox have a base runner one out here in the fourth inning. Oliveras actually started this game with more walks than strikeouts. 59 walks going in and 56 strikeouts. Uh, hits the above innings pitch. So you generally get some base runners against him, but you got to stay away from those double plays. Last six hits for Nomar Garcia Para have been doubles, including two in the ball game yesterday. Last ball moves Nomar back. One ball, no strikes. Garcia Parra fouled out to Giambi at first base back in the second inning. 
And called. Second base umpire Bill Miller is coming in. Is there a sign back behind the plate? Or a flash bulb? See who the culprit was, but something was going on back behind the plate, and Miller wanted to move. Garcia yeah. Parra fouls it away. One ball, one strike. Omar leading the American League in hitting, coming in with a 361 mark. Seven points better than Derek Jeter. Omar two for four yesterday. Jeter also two for four, while Bernie Williams, the other member of the top trio, was 0 for four. Williams now hitting. 352 on the season. Well, Bob can't have any more than a couple of step lead over there at first base, but a couple of throws over by. Alavarez. Certainly not a, st a steel threat. Alavarez misses inside. Two balls, one strike. 13 career complete ball games for Omar Alavarez, including three this year, all as a member of the Angels. He has two career shutouts, both in 97 when he was with Detroit. Has a 4 0 lead over the Red Sox in this one. Bottom half of the fourth inning. Garcia Parra fouls it back. And that evens the count at 2 and 2. Oliveris has bounced around the A's, his seventh team in the last six years. And pretty steady, though, the last couple. Garcia Parra hit with the pitch. Oliver is coming in, and he's hit by a pitch. And Omar trots down to first base. Dorbach moves to second. There's two on now with one out. That's certainly the last thing Oliver wanted to do with a four-run lead is uh, hit Nomar, but uh, trying to come inside with two strikes. And we'll get Nomar right off the uh, shoulder, it looked like. Oliver has hit four batters in a ball game, June the 13th against Arizona to tie a major league record. Garcia Parra, the first Red Sox flunk tonight. Number 25. Only the fourth time this year that uh, Nomar has hit, been hit by a pitch. The leader on the Red Sox is Mike Stanley. He's been plucked nine times. Now the Red Sox have two aboard with one out here in the fourth. Robach at second base. Garcia Parra aboard at first. Those are the base runners. Roy O'Leary at the plate. As a hitter, when you're facing a guy like Oliveira, I should tell yourself, trying to get the ball up from him, you know, he likes to keep the ball down, get the ground ball out, tail it away from left-handed hitters. O'Leary made a bid. Chavez made the play. A little soft line drive by O'Leary. I thought for a moment there it might get into shallow left field, fall safely, but Chavez... Goes over, makes the play for the second out of the inning. Yeah, he was playing back well behind the line and also moved over towards shortstop. And looked like this ball hit with a lot of spin on it by uh, 18, Troy O'Leary. That was a view, Bob. I thought it had a chance to get up over his head, but uh, had a nice play on it. Bobak had to quickly get back before getting doubled off. A big two out at bat here for Reggie Jefferson. Who takes one down low. One ball, no strikes. Jefferson singled to right back in the second inning. Has excellent career numbers against Oliveris. Two on, two outs for the Red Sox. Down 4 nothing here. Bottom half the fourth inning. It's a long single by Reggie Jefferson. The Red Sox are on the board. It's four to one. 
That's the perfect approach by Jefferson against this type of pitcher. They're going to move that ball down and away from the left-handed hitters, and when you try to pull it, that's when you get those ground balls. This time, Jefferson will just take it to the opposite field, up off the wall, and the Red Sox pick up their first run. Well, we mentioned the matchup between Jefferson and Alavarez. Uh, it's been good for Reggie throughout his career, and it's good again tonight. Reggie hits the wall. The Red Sox hit the scoreboard. It's 4-1. to Garcia Parr at third. Jefferson at first. Jason Veritek at the plate. Lynch with the save, back behind the plate. One ball, no strikes. Jason Veritek forced Reggie Jefferson in second base to end the second inning. Jason is 0 for 1 so far in the ball game tonight. Oliveris flags it down. He's going to have to get up here and throw out Veritek, and that'll retire beside. Sharply hit ground ball up the middle. That'll do it for the Red Sox. They get one run on one hit. They strand a pair. They trail Oakland 4-1 now as we head to the fifth. Essence exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by New England Ford. Stop by a New England Ford dealer for savings on great new Ford cars and trucks. And by Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. And by Gillette Mach 3, the first triple blade razor. And by Hertz, nobody does it exactly like Hertz. And by Heineken, it's all about the beer, Heineken. And by Bell Atlantic Mobile, a cell phone is only as good as the network it's on. Choose Bell Atlantic Mobile. Awesome, Jerry. Just awesome. <laughs> what a job on the billboards. We're joined now by the Red Sox newest signee, number one draft choice, Rick Asadorian from Northbridge High School. Welcome to the Red Sox. Thank you very much. So you're already decked out in uniform. Nice hat. Yeah, I got my uniform, my hat. I'm ready to go. Now you just got to get some hits and you'll be yeah, all exactly. set. Exactly, exactly. How are you feeling today? Uh, I have to say this is the best day of my life. Um, uh, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's definitely memorable. And, you know, it's just a start. Hopefully, you know, I can make it up and play with these guys in a, in a, in a couple of years. So, no, I'll, I'll do my best and we'll see what happens. Well, growing up in New England, this has to be a dream come true for you. I think it's a dream everybody growing up in New England, really. Um, you know, especially a kid playing baseball, you know, when he's in Little League. But, um, you know, the it just, it just quickly became reality on uh, June 2nd. And, uh, you know, it's, even be, it's becoming more of a reality now today, uh, August 16th, I guess. <laughs> A date that will live on in your memory forever. Definitely. Rick, let me ask you this. It's, uh, you're a young man, and it's a very tough decision uh, to make, obviously. Now, it makes it easier when you're a number one pick. But you've got the choice of college. You've got the choice of professional baseball. You've got people tugging you one way, other people tugging you the other way. Was it clear to you that if you got drafted that high, you were going to sign? I think so. Um, I, I basically came across in the early in the uh, year and said, you know, it would have to be kind of an offer that you can't refuse, uh, something that, you know, you'd say you'd be a fool to refuse this. Um, you know, University of Florida was very important to me. Um, you know, it was a great place, and in my heart, I'm a Gator, and I haven't even stepped a foot on the field there, but, uh, um, you know, that's going to be a, a, that place, it, it would have to take something big to pull me away from there, and, um, you know, and this is, I guess this is as big as it can get. Yeah, you know, drafted in the first round by your hometown exactly. team, 17th overall selection. You can't, overall you can't really improve much on that, really. And, um, you know, there are slots you can improve, really, up to number one pick. But, you know, they, I don't think there's another team in baseball that I'd rather be uh, picked by and have the opportunity to play with. Jerry, would you tell Wade Boggs after his first hit, uh, 2,999 to go? <laughs> you have 3,000 to go. <laughs> well, I got a few. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if I'll, I'll ever get up that high. But if I do, that'd be great. You were paid a very high compliment by Wayne Britton, uh, one of the uh, members uh, who was following the press conference this afternoon, asked to who he re you remind him of, and he quickly mentioned Dwight Evans, of course, who was a terrific right fielder here for a number of years. You have a very strong throwing arm. I know Evans had a terrific throwing arm. That's a, that's a high compliment. Well, yeah, I mean, I grew up, and I, I was a little young to remember him, you know. Um, yes, I know. Like, you, know. <laughs> you remember Jerry but, Remy? <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, it, I guess it is a definitely a compliment. I know his reputation, and I, I do remember a few things, and one of the things I remember was his arm and the way, you know, he could hit the ball a little bit too. So, um, you know, it is a, it's a compliment to be given. Um, it's, it, it's a, it, if you give that compliment to anybody, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 
tremendous, tremendous compliment, it, not just for, from him um, or about Dwight Evans, but even any major leaguer. I mean, if you, you compare it to any one of them, they, you know, they're the best players in the world. Well, you, you look so. down at the field now, Rick, and you see two number one draft choices. One's at shortstop, Nomar Garcia Parra, Trot Nixon uh, out in right field. So right. it's not that far from here to it, out there. Well, you know, it's still got a little work to do, and, you know, hopefully I can uh, fulfill that. And, um, you know, I think uh, I think I can do it. Um, hard work and all, you know, all the dedication and everything. So hopefully someday I'll be playing alongside these guys. Andy Velarde down here on strikes. That's the second strikeout for Guthrie tonight. What is next on your schedule? Where do you go from here? Uh, from here, I'm going to be going down to Fort Myers in the Gulf Coast League. Um, I'm not going to be playing any games. Um, uh, Mr. Britton said earlier that I did sign a 2,000 contract. It's just not enough time to get, First you know, um, uh, game acclimated to, to, the, to the schedule and the, and the heat and everything. I'm just going to be going down, conditioning, working out, and, um, you know, I'll get my games in the instructional league. What do you think is going to be the biggest adjustment for you going directly from high school into professional baseball? Well, I think the biggest adjustment is the, uh, the offensive part of the game with the, with the wooden bat and obviously a, a lot better pitching. Um, you know, everybody's going to go through it as soon as you step into a, a professional uniform. But, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I adjust. I can adjust or I'll try to adjust, you know, rather quickly. Um, you know, I think that's, that's everybody's goal to just get adjusted. And um, once that happens, uh, you, you know, you never know what, what, the, uh, what, what can happen with you and how fast you can move up to the big leagues. How much experience do you have with the wooden bat? Uh, I have a little bit uh, with the area code games, two years, and um, just, the, just working out in early in the year with, um, with wooden bats, taking BP. Um, but for the most part in the games, the only real um, the games I've been in with uh, wooden bats are just in the area code games. Now, you have a friend down there who has already signed the number two prick, uh, Brad Baker, that you are very familiar with, played against yep. him. Yeah, Brad and I were actually really good friends. Um, I was very happy with him when he signed, and um, you know, I'm actually going to give him a call in a little while. Number I'm sure five. he's in his hotel room. The designated um, hitter. You know, I, I, I gave him a you message. Sure he's in his hotel room? <laughs> I think so. I think so. Time's curfew. <laughs> yeah. But um, I gave him a message Saturday. I told him I'd give him a call. So, um, you know, whether or not he's waiting for my call, I don't know. But, um, you know. He told me when he was, when the day he was signing, and you know, I just thought it'd be uh, nice to let him know and tell him I'll be down there Wednesday. What are your Fenway experiences as far as you ever play here, or you, I, obviously you've come here as a fan? Yeah, I played a few games here, the state final game, um, which unfortunately we lost. Um, that was a tough one, but I did get a chance. I, I, I hit one over the monster. That was, that was kind of a, um, you know, a highlight, I guess you could say. And I had a few workouts here, and uh, I played in the All-Star game here. Massachusetts versus Connecticut um, but f you know just for, from the four times I stepped on the field it was just unbelievable and it's unbelievable to think that you know, this could be my home place someday come here often as a fan uh, fit, you know as, as, as soon as as soon as I can get out here I get out and once I can keep coming back I you know I, I love to come out here maybe four or five times a year it would be the best um, the most um, uh, most time I'll spend out here during the season um, but, you know, it's just, it's exciting to come as a fan, and I can imagine what it's like to be as a player, and hopefully someday I'll, um, you know, I'll see what that's like. Well, we know you're a great athlete because you were a three-sport star in high school. You played football, basketball, and baseball. Uh, obviously, I know baseball is your favorite sport now, but has it always been that way? Yeah, I think so, all through my life. Um, I think baseball's always been my favorite. You know, even though I love the other two sports, um, you know, I, I always thought that baseball would be the furthest I could go, and... I mean, right now it's it's looking pretty good, and hopefully it can continue to look good. Who have been some of your favorite Red Sox players throughout the years, other than Jerry Remy? <laughs> um, I think some of the. I, I remember I remember early when I was young watching Wade Boggs and Roger Clemens, and um, I remember even watching like Jody Reed and uh, you know a bunch of those guys. But you know, up to now, I think my favorite would be you know Nomar, just the way he plays the game is unbelievable. And um, uh, I know I told I play a totally different position, but. Uh, you know, he's an athlete. I'd like to maybe someday be that, that athletic in my position and hopefully, um, you know, get up to his caliber. Rick, if I, if I get anywhere near there, it's, uh, it'll be a good it'll be a good career for me. Well, thank you. Hopefully someday you'll be his teammate. Thanks thank for joining us on the much. broadcast. Good you. luck to you. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Rick Asadori in the Red Sox number one draft pick. A's have a 4-1 lead here after four and a half. Donnie Sadler leads off here for the Red Sox, goes after the first pitch from Oliveris, rounds it to short, and is thrown out by Tejada. Time now for What's on Tap, brought to you by Heineken. 
Boys on tap for the Red Sox. Three more in this series against the Oakland A's. Tomorrow night at 7. Note the Wednesday start time of 7.30. And 6 o'clock on Thursday. Ball games on Nesson. Friday and Saturday's games on the JCS New England Television Network at 8.30. And Sunday night's game at 8 from Texas here on Nesson. Rod Nixon looks at one down and away. One ball, no strikes. Nixon flied out to right field back in the third. Omedo signs takes over at first base. Jason Giambi leaving the ball game. Base hit here by Nixon. Pass to second baseman Velarde. Well, the number one pick uh, did a very nice job in the press conference today. Uh, that has to be very intimidating uh, coming right out of high school and all of a sudden you're in this room as a number one uh, sign number player three. and you have all this media uh, focused on you did a Jose terrific job with it he really 19 did. years old he's very well spoken yep. you give him a tip to eat at Nino's when he goes down to Fort Myers no I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to put too much on his plate all at once you know He's going to go down to Fort Myers, I guess. A workout down there. There's the instructional league for the Red Sox, which will start, I think, around the 20th of September and then runs till the third week in October. He'll take part in that and then go to spring training with the minor leaguers next year. And I think only somebody like you, Jerry, can appreciate what lies ahead for the young man. I don't think most of us really know what players have. We see players on the major league level. You don't see what they have to go through to get here. Well, the first thing I think that he's going to notice when he gets down there, obviously he's a, a very talented player. You have to be to be a number one pick in any organization. But you're also going to find out that there's a lot of other good players around, too. And when you go down there for the first time, it's a little bit intimidating. Uh, you're accustomed to being the best player on your team, maybe your league. And you're going to be down with a group that's uh, pretty much in the same boat. So it takes a while to get over that. And the other thing is it's uh, it's different. It's very different playing professional baseball. He's going to have an awful lot that he thinks he knows about baseball that he really doesn't. And he's going to find 13, out uh, down at the minor league baseman, level, obviously, with every step John that he makes. Valentin. The one advantage of being a number one pick is that you will get every benefit of the doubt. And as long as you have a proper attitude, you know you've got the ability you know you're going to get moved along at a, at a fairly good clip so uh, he's got that certainly behind it but he's got a lot in front of him and uh, it looks like a very bright kid and he's going to do well is there extra pressure on the number one pick or not well I don't know you know I, I don't I don't think there is I don't know I was never a number one pick you know I think there's more pressure on the kids that go down there and uh, they're not number one two or three pick well, certainly wished Rick well as he begins his professional baseball career look pretty good in that Boston uniform you know, you take a couple of roads. Uh, one is uh, like Nomar, who got here very, very quickly to the big leagues. The other road taken by Trot Nixon took a little bit longer. But uh, they, they're number one picks for a reason. And uh, they're usually very good athletes. And they're excellent baseball players that some need more time to mature than others. Some are drafted later. I mean, Nomar, of course, was drafted from Georgia Tech. And Rick goes right out of high school. Just 19 years of age. That's another factor that's, uh, you know, that's going to take a couple of extra years. Like you talked about just hitting with the wooden bat. I mean, that's going to take a while to get used to. Score here, 4-1 for the A's. John Valentin pops this one foul back over our heads. Two balls, two strikes to count. Sox have uh, Trot Nixon at second base with two outs here. Bottom half the fifth inning. Trailing Oakland 4-1. A's got all four of their runs in the third. Knocking Brian Rose out of the game. Three run home run by A.J. Hinch. RBI single by Jaha. Red Sox picked up a run in the fourth inning on Reggie Jefferson single off the left field wall. And it'll be a full count on Valentin. The other adjustment, Bob, just one more thing on, on being a draft choice is the fact that baseball now is your life. And it's every day of your life. It's not like high school where you get three games a week. I mean, you've got to be there day in and day out, the ups and downs of uh, the daily grind. And uh, that's something that a young kid takes a while to adjust to. Valentin hooks this one foul. Still three balls, two strikes. Remember how you felt when you first went down? I know you weren't a number one pick, but how it feels when, like, you get off the plane and, or, or the bus or the train or whatever and head over? Scared to death. You know, scared to death. Uh, first time away from home, basically, for any period of time, which is an adjustment. Uh, like I said, you're around all these players that are 
as good, if not better than you. And it's very, very intimidating. And it takes a while to, uh, to get your feet on the ground. The ball's two strikes here on John Valentin. Oliveras checks uh, Nixon at second base. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Valentin, line drive, base hit, right field. Nixon goes to third, being waved home. Here's the throw by stairs to the plate, and it will be not in time. Bounces away. It was in time, but it bounced away from the catcher, Hinch, and safe at the plate is Nixon. It's 4 2. Jim Evans, the plate umpire, waiting and waiting to make the call. Finally, he saw the baseball loose, and the safe sign came out. Well, the Red Sox now with a couple of uh, two out hits to get runs home here in this ball game. Valentin hit this ball hard and it was an excellent charge put on by Matt Stairs. Stairs has 10 outfield assists, and this looked like it was going to be number 11. The throws there in plenty of time, but the ball will pop right out of the glove. It looked like the left hand of Trot Nixon helped that ball come out of the glove. See it here, left hand, left arm, and hits the glove, and the ball is dropped by Hinch. I don't think he ever really had it square in that glove, and whatever Nixon did with that left hand, he knocked it right out. You're right, the throw by Stairs was a beauty. It was right on the money, and Nixon would have been out had Hinch been able to hold on to the baseball. John Hattiebird checks in with Nixon there in the dugout, 4-2. Knox have Ballantin in first base, Brian Daubach at the plate. Talk about Asadorian, number one draft pick. A guy like Brian Daubach has really had to battle to reach the big leagues. He and Matt Stairs are similar, not so much they're similar hitters or similar players, but they're it took him a long time to get somebody to take a look at him and give him a chance. Robach going through the Mets organization in Florida. We've talked about that plenty on the broadcast. And Stairs also originally with the Expos. Played with the Red Sox in 95. Stairs went out to Oakland and uh, had a battle for some playing time there early. Not rightly, though. They found a place for his bat in the lineup. Stairs has responded with a couple of big years for the A's. down on strikes and that'll retire beside Sox get a run though on a big two out base hit by John Valentin we played five at Fenway it's four to two watching Sox in two the rebroadcast of Monday's Red Sox game here on Nesson we now rejoin the action later in the game Seventh inning stretch, excuse me, Bob, from uh, Fenway. It's a 5-2 to two Oakland lead. There's no better place to get all the up-to-date information about the hometown team than at RedSox.com. Featuring player bios, 24-hour ticketing, and a souvenir cyber store, RedSox.com is a must-see for any Red Sox fan. So, next time you're on the Internet, be sure to visit www.RedSox.com. Didn't realize you had that important promo. You always jump in the gun. Yeah? Donnie Sadler here in the seventh. Tejada makes a nice play. The throw, not in time. Sadler, terrific speed, beats the relay. And the Red Sox have the leadoff man aboard. Well, it was a fine play by Tejada, but uh, Donnie Sadler can really get down that line. It's hard to get a lot on that throw in that position, and he has to bounce it. Donnie will beat it, and the Red Sox have the leadoff man on here in the seventh. Number seven. The right fielder. It's a nice feeling right. to have that kind of speed and be able to beat out an infield ground ball. Rod Nixon looks at ball one. Nixon has flied to right and singled to right, hitting 266 now in the year. Rick Peterson, the pitching coach of the A's, coming out. Lavares is throwing 88 pitches to this point in the ball game. Has had pretty good command. He has not been in a whole lot of difficulty tonight. And Michael, who was warming in the bullpen last inning, is up in the heating up again for the A's. Oliveras has three complete games on the season, all of those coming when he was with the Angels. In his Oakland starts, he went uh, six innings the last time out to beat the Yankees, five and a third, no decision against the White Sox, and seven innings against Tampa Bay on July 31st, his first appearance after the trade. 
And 88 pitches to this point of the ball game. Donnie Sadler, the Red Sox have him at first base. Nobody out. Bottom of the seventh inning. A count of one ball, no strikes on Trot Nixon. Scoots down to second base. Probably going to go as a pass ball on A.J. Hinch. Oh, it looked like it went right through the glove. I think the changeup on that 2-0 count and uh, right off the edge of the webbing. And back to the backstop. There's a strike, 3-1. at second nobody out three one pitch to Nixon chops it on the ground to second base Velarde will get it over to signs at first Sadler moves to third with one gone well, certainly Trot looking for more than that and that at bat but if you're going to make an out you might as well advance a base runner with Number it 30, the second still base uh, plenty of time left for the Red Sox only down by three Nixon upset with himself on the 3-1 pitch with the ground ball to second base. Something happened. We talked about it earlier, Bob, and the left hand has tried to pull that sinker down and away. That's the result. Jose Offerman has one hit and three trips tonight. Toronto having trouble tonight with Seattle. Tejada makes the play deep in the hole as foot slipped and Offerman able to beat the relay to first base. Sadler scores on the play. Red Sox get the run back. It's five to three. Now Tejada very deep at shortstop. Well hit hard again by Offerman and good job going the other way. Tejada back on that outfield grass and when he goes to plant to throw the ball he's going to slip just a bit. Right there. See the right leg come from underneath, and uh, it's amazing he was able to even make a throw over from that point. So the Red Sox take him any way they can get him at this point. Now only down by two, and that's going to be it for Oliveras. Pitching into the seventh inning, going six and a third in his start against the Red Sox tonight. Going to leave the ball game with the lead. Going to leave responsible for Jose Offerman in first base. Nice job by Ol Oliveras. Has pitched well in all four of his outings now for the Oakland A's. Tell Atlantic Mobile call to the bullpen. Greg McMichael will answer that. We'll take a break. Back with more from Fenway right after this. You are watching Sox in Two, the rebroadcast of Monday's Red Sox game here on Nesson. We now rejoin the action later in the game. Nesson's exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball has been brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly Southwest Airlines. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you, but three most important words are, hey, beer man. By Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. And by Mobile, introducing the fastest way to get gas, Mobile Speed Pass. It's free and it's only at Mobile. Back inside Fenway Park, top of the ninth inning, the Oakland A's with a two-run lead over the Red Sox, 5-3. to three. Red Sox will be getting their fourth pitcher of the ball game, Derek Lowe now replacing Rich Garces. 54th appearance on the season for Derek Lowe. He worked three innings in his last outing, and that came against Seattle back on the 13th. Good numbers below the 50 strikeouts, 63 hits and 77 and two-thirds. Mark's using Brian Rose for two and a third, and because of the short start, Mark Guthrie going three and a third, and Rich Garces two and a third innings tonight for the Red Sox. Guthrie was sensational, three and a third scoreless innings. Garces gave up one run, two hits, and his two and a third. Anthony Williams and Grady Little having to go to the bullpen again here in the ninth inning. Derek Lowe. 
Try and keep this a two-run game. Give the Red Sox a shot at Doug Jones and the A's in the bottom of the ninth. Let's have Jason Veritek, Donnie Sadler, and Trot Nixon. Bottom third of the order due up. Eric Chavez will lead off here in the top of the ninth, though, for the A's. Chavez has singled to right, struck out swinging, and then in last at bat, lined out to Donnie Sadler out in center field. Two strikes. Chavez last year, minor league player of the year, hit 328 at Huntsville in double A, 325 at Edmonton in triple A. Wound up the year with a combined 33 home runs, knocked in 126 runs. And has a tough at bat. Low makes quick work of him. Three pitches, and he's gone. Ball down and away from Chavez. Looked like it might have been a changeup from Derek Lowe. You see the very off balance swing by Chavez. The second time he has struck out tonight. Went down on a curveball from Mark Guthrie earlier in the ball game. A little bit of a smile and a punch out. Broken bat for Hinch. Long throw for Garcia Parr in time to get the Oakland catcher. Gathered the bat. Derek Lowe breaks a number of them, and uh, Hinch loses one in that at bat. Well, he's got a big hit already in this game, that three run home run back in the third inning. Lowe inside with the fastball. You could hear the bat crack. And Nomar again surrounding the ball, the off balance throw. Number 28. Take a two pretty good arms at shortstop in this series. Nomar, obviously, which was custom to in Tejada, is a very nice arm for the Oakland Athletics. Two outs in the inning, top of the order. Ryan Christensen, the rookie center fielder. And strike to count on Christensen. And a two-out single a couple of innings ago in the seventh. He's one for three tonight. Again, the Red Sox in the bottom half of the inning, bottom third of the order. Jason Veritek, Donnie Sadler, and Trot Nixon do up against Jones. One ball and one strike on the A center fielder. Right in on the hands again, one and two. Well, that's a swing there that uh, you hope it hits the bat, not the hands. Got four runs back in the third inning on the three-run home run by Hinch. The RBI single by John Jaha. Red Sox got on the board in the fourth inning. Reggie Jefferson's RBI single. And again in the fifth, John Ballantin coming through with two outs to make it 4-2. He's made it 5-2 in the top of the seventh. Red Sox answered in the bottom half of the inning. And so it's still a 5-3 ball game as Lowe sets down Oakland order here in the top of the ninth. A two-run A's lead as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Here we are, bottom half of the ninth inning at Fenway Park. Red Sox need two to tie and three to win this one in regulation. Doug Jones, the A's closer on. Actually, he came on to get the final out of the eighth inning. The open bullpen has been magnificent tonight. Starting pitcher did a pretty good job. Omar Oliveras made what they call a quality start in baseball now. Six and a third innings. Gave up three runs. Greg McMichael pitched a scoreless inning. Buddy Groom has scored as one-third. Doug Jones has scored as one-third. Five up, five down. So far for the Red Sox against the A's bullpen. It's been strong pitching tonight for the Oakland A's. Pitching has been a strength of the Oakland ball club. You know, the surprising ERA of 4-5-3 as a staff behind only New York and Boston in the American League. 
Jason Baratek. With Jimmy Williams cooks up here, bottom half of the ninth inning. Jason Baratek to lead it off for the Red Sox. Baratek 0 for 3 so far tonight. Swings and misses at the first offering from Jones. Veritek safe on a fielder's choice. Has bounced back to the pitcher and is grounded out to second base. Line drive, base hit, right field. So Veritek with a single to start tonight. That'll bring the tying run to the plate for the Red Sox. Threw the fastball by him on the first pitch, then went to the changeup, and Veritek all over it for the line drive base hit. Even though he's out on his front foot, the hands stay back, and uh, Veritek able to pick up the hit. Looks like Butch Husky coming up now to pinch hit for Donnie Savage. Butch Husky. Batting for Donnie Sadler, Butch 297 on the year, 18 home runs, 61 runs batted in. And he could tie this with one swing of the bat. Muskie has hit 342 with three homers in 13 games as a member of the Red Sox. And he's four for seven this year as a pinch hitter. Makes a healthy cut. One strike to count. I would guess that a lot of his pinch hitting uh, is against left-handed pitching when he was with Seattle. Loops this one foul down the right field line. Science was over for a look. A hit on the tarp area. No balls, two strikes. A's five, Sox three, bottom half the ninth inning. Here's a long drive, base hit, right field. Veritek, round second, he'll hold. Veritek and Husky, two quick singles to get the Red Sox started here in the bottom of the ninth. Good job by Husky, quickly down two strikes and uh, pretty much forgets about the home run. Tries to stay away from the strikeout, will take the ball to the opposite field. Good job there, good piece of hitting by Husky. Kind of a protective swing with two strikes, but uh, good enough to get the job done. It's like Darren Lewis going in the pinch run at second base for Veritek. Now running for Veritek at second base, number 20, Darren Now by doing this, you would think that the Red Sox may put on the bun sign with uh, Nixon at the plate. Because basically that is not the tying run there in uh, Darren Lewis, but when you see him pinch run at second base with that runner, you would think they would have the bunt side. I was going to ask you that. Why would you pinch run for uh, pinch run for him? That would be the uh, the reason. We'll see if uh, Jimmy has it on. Nixon has a base hit that came back in the fifth inning. He scored the Red Sox second run of the ball game coming in on Ballantin single. Fox have Naren Lewis now at second base. They have Butch Husky at first. The bunt is on. Nixon does not offer one ball, no strikes. Tell you what, now Nixon, I don't know how well he can handle a bat in these bunting situations, but there was a big hole at shortstop as they had the rotation play on. And usually a guy that has experience in sacrifice situations, when they see that play, they have the option to go ahead and slap it through that hole. Now, on the other side, defensively, very seldom do you put that play on twice for just that reason. Nixon does not have a sacrifice hit this year. Bon attempt at the plate is fouled away. See what I mean? That time, uh, the shortstop, Miguel Tejada, faked like he was going to break toward third base and then stopped right in the middle. As to how to breaking, he's trying to deep Nixon now, and he just stops. So if Nixon had chosen to slap the ball at shortstop, 
He might have slapped it into a double play. One ball, one strike. Base runners again. Lewis at second base. Woods Husky at first. One and one on the hitter. Nixon squares. Gets the bunt down the first baseline, but it rolls foul. It's one and two. See, you know, Nixon, uh, a lot of times in this situation, you try to bunt the ball to third. What you're trying to do is draw that third baseman off the bag, but they don't have an experienced first baseman at first base. Uh, Lando signs basically a third baseman. At least that's what he was when we saw him earlier in the season, uh, an outfielder, and uh, that's why I think he tried to, went to go towards first base that time. Now Nixon is hitting with two strikes on him. One and two is the count. Swings away, pops and foul. Chavez coming over the third baseman, makes a dive back in the crowd, but can't come up with the baseball. Just a little bit out of his reach. He had a time perfectly the leap, but the ball was just a little far back. He'd have run right through that wall if he could have tried to get that first out of the inning. Into the dive, a couple of rows back, but uh, can't make the play. He's got an awful lot to deal with over there. again by Nixon. Still one and two. Almost like uh, Art Howe wants a fastball up on Nixon. Nixon drives this one deep out towards the left field wall. Scooting back is McDonald, and McDonald will make the catch. The runners will have to tag and return Lewis to second base and Husky to first. Jason McDonald, the former center fielder, played a lot of center field, playing left field in uh, place of Reeve tonight, ran that one down out in left center. That ball just died. It looked like when this ball left the bat of Nixon, it was certainly going to be off the wall, but it must have been right toward the end of the bat because it looked like it just died on the way out to left field. McDonald in there for speed and defense makes a terrific play. And what looked like was going to be a ball off the wall and maybe a run at least one run turns into the first out of the inning. Husky was all the way around second base. He had to retag second on the way back to first. Jose Nixon failed twice in the bunt attempt but then fouled off a couple of pitches and got one and hit him. To left center, but not enough. Off of the order, Jose Offerman takes a called strike. Outfield very deep, deeper than he normally would be against Offerman. Offerman line drive, base hit right field. Wendell Kim throws up the stop sign, stops Darren Lewis at third base. And the bases are loaded for the Red Sox with one out. Now, Wendell's getting booed now by the fans. And uh, see, what the outfielders are instructed to do in that situation is, is be concerned about the potential tying and winning run. He has no concern at all for that runner at second base, who is Darren Lewis. He's not even going to try to throw the ball home. Their concern is to try to keep these other two guys from scoring. As soon as he gets this ball, he's not paying any attention at all to Darren Lewis. He's going right to second base because that is the potential tying and then the winning run at first. Fox have loaded the bases with one out. John Valentin at the plate. Hunter Lewis at third base. Represents run four for the Red Sox. That's got to get him home as well as Butch Husky at second. One ball and one strike. Valentin tonight is hit into a 1-4-3 double play. That was back in the first. Rounded to shortstop in the fourth inning. Singled to right. Big two-out base hit in the fifth to drive in a run. And then went down swinging in the seventh. Valentin fouls it back. It's one and two.
Bases loaded with one out. Swing and a miss. And Valentin down on strikes. And Michael got him in the seventh inning, and Jones gets him here in the ninth. Here comes Art Howe, the Oakland skipper. It's a change up again by Doug Jones to pick up the strikeout. Well, Art Howe out to the mound, and the guy that has been closing games for him will be leaving the ball game. Now, they don't have another left-hander listed down in that bullpen. It's not going to be a left-hander. Looks like it might be uh, Todd Worrell coming in. Ryan Daubach will be the hitter for the Red Sox. Red Sox getting their hottest uh, hitter to the plate. And a potential game-time, game-winning situation here in the bottom of the ninth inning. A's going to the bullpen. Jones working an inning in relief. He is out of there. We'll take a break. Back for the finish here at Fenway Park right after this. Back here at Fenway Park. Red Sox trying to pull one out here. Bottom half of ninth inning. They've loaded the bases with two outs. A's have made a pitching change, and Tim Worrell now will take over. Worrell just recently coming off of the Sabre list. He was on there with a strained left ribcage muscle. He's already appeared, though, in 40 games. It does not have a save on the season. More of a strikeout pitcher. 45 strikeouts in 52 and two-thirds. Also a lot of 55 hits. And Daubach here would like to make it 56. Mentioned the A's did not have another left-hander in the bullpen. Morrell coming on to pitch to the left-handed hitting Daubach. And Sox hottest hitter. Daubach comes to the plate with Darren Lewis at third base. Which Husky at second base. Husky representing the tying run. And Jose Offerman at first base representing the potential winning run. And a storybook weekend for Daubach, the American League's player of the week, and he can add another chapter. Three for five with the bases loaded. Up high, one ball, no strikes. for Worrell against left-handers has given up two home runs this year. Daubach will foul it off. One and one. Single by Veritek to open the inning. A single by Butch Husky in a pinch hitting roll. Darren Lewis in to run for Veritek. Rod Nixon drove one to left field. Jason McDonald ran it down in left center. Offerman singled to load the bases and balance him down on strikes. And that'll leave it up to Brian Daubach. One ball, one strike to count. Up high, ball two. Daubach reaches. Nomar Garcia Parra on deck. Standing here at Fenway for this exciting finish tonight. Hooks it foul. Shot it past Dave Joust down the first baseline. Full count now on Daubach. So the base runners, Lewis at third, Husky at second. Offerman at first will all be off with a 3-2 pitch. Looks like it might have been ball four that time on Daubach. He does not walk very much. Ball down and in. That's, that's a pitch the left hand of likes. One way rocking, and uh, as they wait for the 3 2 pitch, Rick Horrell is not going to do it. They brought Husky back to second base. 
Bases are loaded for the Red Sox here. Bottom half the ninth inning. Three two pitch is fouled off. We'll do it again. Had a good one that time. Fastball right down the middle. Fouled it back. Two pitches pop foul. Chavez charging over. Here comes Hinch, the catcher, into the slide. Can't get it. Wasn't hit high enough. And Dawbach stays alive just by inches. A.J. Hinch. Feet first as he heads toward the stands. Uh, he took a little bit of extra time picking up the ball, and that may have cost him. Maybe, maybe if he had picked that up right away, he could have been standing trying to make that play instead of sliding. Tension continues here at Fenway. Robach has fouled off two 3-2 offerings. Getting some encouragement there from Nomar Garcia Parra. Here's the 3 2 again to Dorbach, and Dorbach will follow off another one. And an eight pitch at bat so far. More tension at Fenway. Crowd standing here at Fenway, nervously shifting back and forth. The 3-2 pitch to Brian Dorbach sends this one right down the right field line. Foul! Mike DeMuro, the first base umpire going down. No question that it was out of the park as far as the home run goes, but was it fair or foul? DeMuro says foul. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, that was really close. I'll tell you, when you watch Dorbach, he felt like he had the home run. That ball left the bat, Bob. I thought it was a grand slam to win the game, but it just kept hooking and apparently fouled. Dawbach put up an argument, not much said by Dave Jouse, the first base coach. Boy, that's a tough one to tell. Obviously, there it looks foul. Here's Dawbach's reaction. He thought he had the home run. Three balls, two strikes, all over again. Three, two, pitch. Sends this one left field away. Scooting back is Jason McDonald. This one's off the wall. Lewis scores. Here comes Butch Husky. He'll score as well. And also Offerman with the winning run. Dorbach clears the bases with a double off the wall. The Red Sox win the ball game. Six to five. Continues for Brian Dorbach. Bellevue Basher has done it again. A wild finish here at Fenway Park tonight. Brian Dorbach, who just misses a grand slam home run, instead plants a double on the left field wall. Darren Lewis, Butch Husky, and Jose Offerman all score on the play, and the 
Red Sox pull one out. Three runs here in the bottom of the ninth to win it six to five. Talking about it at bat, I'll tell you what, after just missing a home run, pulling the ball, then back to the opposite field, off the chin, and of course with everybody off on the three-two count, they'll score easily. You might want to look back at this one when the season's over, I'll tell you that. A 10-pitch at bat, and Daubach, on the 10th pitch, plants it up against the wall. Brian standing downstairs. He's our guest. What a wild finish this one was. Wow. It's hard to explain. The fans here at his office, this place is great right now. Talk about the at bat. In 3-2, you fouled off pitch after pitch. You thought he had a grand slam, didn't you? Yeah, I really thought it was fair, but, uh, you know, it's right over the top of the foul pole. It's hard to judge. And uh, just glad I came back and got the big hit. This is huge for us, and I uh, hope we can just keep it going the rest of the series. It's been a magical sp uh, spin for you, Brian. You got the player of the week, and then you have this to top it off. All these people still standing here at Fenway. Yeah, it's a long way from uh, last year, that's for sure, but uh, this still helped this team win. It's uh, hard to explain, really. Have you ever had a weekend like this in your life? <laughs> Maybe in Little League. Hey, Brian, tell me, you know, on the, it looked like a fastball that you pulled that was just fouled. Yeah. Was that an off-speed pitch to the opposite field? Yeah, he came back with a changeup, and uh, I was just able to uh, stay back and drive it off that wall. Thank so, you very much, and congratulations. Right. What a terrific Thank weekend. You. Thank you. Out of breath can still hardly talk. Brian Daubach, what a terrific finish here at Fenway Park tonight. Standing ovation for Brian Daubach.